Hello, this is Kent Beck. Uh, welcome to episode one in the uh, series uh, Introduction to Test Driven Development. Uh, in this series, I'll cover the uh, basics of uh, TDD uh, and how it works on a real example. Test Driven Development is uh, intended to help programmers take more responsibility for the quality of their work, and it uh, consists of three uh, parts. The first is uh, developers write tests as they go along, automated tests to support their work. Second, the tests are written in advance of the code that is intended to pass the tests. And uh, third, uh, you design a little at a time as you go along. So I'm going to illustrate that with uh, an example of an interface to Tokyo Tyrant. A Tyrant is a simple database. Uh, all it provides is uh, keys, which are bytes, uh, and values, which are bytes. And uh, everything else is left up to the uh, client application developer. In return for this, though, you get a very high performance system. So uh, the first step in uh, TDD for me is always uh, a list of the tests that I want to have passing by the time the project is finished. So here are a set of operations that Tyrant provides, a number of elements in the database. You can put something, get something, and so on. And Tyrant also provides a socket-based interface and an HTTP-based um, interface. So. I'm going to start with the socket-based interface uh, as uh, the quickest way to get turnaround. At the beginning of projects in particular, my goal is to get the absolute fastest feedback going end-to-end -end on the project. So uh, the first test I'll pick will put something into the database, retrieve something, and make sure that I get back what I put into it. And I want to go end-to-end -end on that as quickly as possible. Okay, so the first test, every uh, TDD project, once you know what test you want, you gotta pick the first test. So I'm going to make a, a test case here, tyrant test. Hello. So, the uh, next thing to do is to write the first test. So, I'm going to uh, put this in my Tyrant project, and I'll call it Tyrant Test. We'll talk more about test naming later on. And this is a JUnit 4 test, since I want to show you the latest and the greatest stuff. All right, so the first test, will be um, there we go uh, first test I'll avoid uh, get retrieves what was put. I like my test names to be little stories now, the test that I want to write is something like this Tyrant T equals new tyrant T dot put some key, some value, assert equals value, comma T dot get key. That's what I want to write. But if I went to implement all of that, I'd be spending 10 or 15 minutes implementing all of that. And if the test didn't pass the first time, I would have a cascade of decisions, any one of which could be wrong. And I could spend, well, my experience, hours figuring out which of those decisions was wrong. So rather than do that, I'm going to keep that in mind as the test that I'd like to grow towards. But instead, I'm going to slice up all of the activities required to get that test running into the shortest possible cycles. 
So uh, the first validation is, uh, is Tyrant out there? I want to, uh, to know that the server is really running. And the simplest way I can think of to validate that is just to open up a socket to it. Because if Tyrant's not out there, none of the rest of this matters. Import that, and I can just uh, throw an exception from the test. Okay. Clean up a little bit, and I can now run this as a JUnit test. And lo and behold, it doesn't work. Now, there's a... Where was I with this? Eventually, the test should be self-contained. But as my goal right now is to... Uh, th that is, it should start up a Tyrant server and shut it down itself. But since my goal is just to validate my assumptions based on my reading of the spec, I don't want to spend time doing that. I will add that to the list here, though. Uh, I want my test to auto start tyrant. And then I'll get to that later. So for purposes of uh, what we're doing right now, I can just start up a server by hand. And now, if I run the tests, it's green. Okay. So, uh, let's see. The next thing to do is to uh, actually write out a key and a value to Tyrant. So I will assign this to a local variable socket. Uh, socket get output stream. Now the format of the put command is uh, writer dot write first uh, c a send out uh, the hex c eight says here comes a command hex ten. says this is a put. The next four bytes are going to be the size of the key. And uh, for key, I'll just use K-E-Y. And uh, I can even use cut and paste. So that'll be three bytes long. And for value, I will use V-A-L-U-E. So that will be five bytes long. Next, I need to write out the actual uh, bytes for that. So that's a K and an E and a Y. And then I can write out V A L E. Oops. Small mistakes. Okay. Once I've written the put command. I can now uh, read a byte from the socket that tells me whether Tyrant thinks it got the value correctly or not. I get input stream read status and assert equals 